Good afternoon. Welcome to Duck Badger Radio on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. And over at DuckBadgerRadio.com if you want to watch the show. Hey, today, just glad to be here. Yes. Just glad to be here. <laughs> you know, for religious people, uh, the day after the promised end of the earth mm-hmm. is, uh, is a pretty big day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, th- th- this is your chance to say your thing. If, if you don't, if you can't, if you can't make conversation out of this today, yeah. If you don't know, there were uh, some predictions made by a uh, fella that yesterday would be the end of the world. Mm-hmm. End of the world as we know it, at least. Yes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in the program. We call this religious radio that's not quite right. So, in one way, I guess I should say we're glad that we're here. But I think even according to his predictions, we may have still been here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't know who the righteous would have been and been taken up. But we'll talk about that a little later, because he was quite generous. He was offering 200 million people were going to go. Oh, wow. So he was quite generous in, yeah. his, in his rapture um, predictions okay. of how many people were going to be taken from the earth. But I still think that people who... Um, it's not a stingy apocalypse after all. He wasn't, he wasn't stingy. <laughs> he may have been wrong. He may have been a little goofy, but he wasn't stingy. So we're just glad to be here. We call this religious radio that's not quite right. Your little... Sunday afternoon delight mm. around here. Sunday afternoons when we talk about religion. We're going to be joined by our rabbi, Joseph Edelheit. We're going to be joined by the atheists of Minnesota. Yeah. Not all of them, because you can't fit a dozen people in the studio. <laughs> but boom boom Hello. Uh, just teasing. Hey, the atheists have a show on the, on the program, uh, on, the sta- on the same station, and uh, we used to follow them, and it was great. You'd, yeah. You'd sort of have, you know, the atheists and then the religious talk. Right. And, uh, but but now, uh, now we're split up by the pet Connection and the and the, and the and the realtors, real estate, yeah, guys. some important stuff in between the religious conversation. Yeah. But they're going to be joining us here in the second <laughs> hour because we wanted to talk about this whole end of the world business. So we will uh, we'll be chatting with them. And uh, as as I read on the internet this week, if you know some people who were really hoping the world was going to end and you need to console them, just just tell them, come on, it's not the end of the earth. Yep, no, nah, I blew it. Just tell them, come on, it's not the end, end of the, the world. world. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Well, how, do you, how do you ruin that joke? I've been I, waiting all morning to I don't tell know. How did you do that? I don't know. I don't know. I said the end of the earth. Now, no. my question is, if the meek are going to inherit the earth, does that mean the meek all get left behind? See, now, all of a sudden, Randon comes in mm-hmm. cross-referencing and mm-hmm. asks a very good question. If Jesus says, uh, uh, the meek shall inherit the earth, and then these people are saying, well, all the good people are going to be taken away, is it the meek that are left here? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I've, I've always thought that's no problem if the meek inherit the earth, <laughs> because we can just push them down and take it back if we want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, but I, I uh, want to introduce you to our, our sidekick, who wasn't here last week. So if you picked up listening to the radio show yeah. y- last week, you, you're like, who's this guy? Who's this yeah. guy? Well, his name is John. I think you're saying if the show sounded a little flat last week. It's because I wasn't here. I would like to say if the show sounded a little thin, but that leads me into John has started a campaign yeah, of yeah. thinness. I it's have. It's called Thong Along with John. Thong Along with John. I like yes. to refer to it as Lose with John. Yes. But John uh, has, has, a, has a, a goal in mind, and tell us that goal and tell us how it's going. Okay, so um, I started about uh, three months ago to um, lose weight, and I wanted to get down to 225 pounds by my birthday, which is June 16th. And that was a big goal. Yeah, because I began at 280. 280 pounds yes. he started at. He's, he was a full-sized man. Yeah, well, yeah. Starts at 280 and says, yeah. you know what, by June 15th? 16th. June 16th. Mm-hmm. Why you religious people pick these weird days, May 21st and June 16th? It'll be on me. But anyway, yeah. June 16th, John yeah. wanted to be so slender at 225 that you would what? That I would uh, wear a thong in public if I got to my goal weight. That you would like wear a thong... Um, swimsuit. Swimsuit. Yeah. And maybe run around Lake Calhoun. Yes. On the 16th. Yes, absolutely. That seems like apocalyptic kind of imagination right there. <laughs> I, I th- And so we've been <clears throat> checking in uh, yes. on weeks. We've been checking in with John. How's the losing going? How much of a loser are you this week? I'm, I'm at exactly 238, so I've lost 50 pounds. 50 pounds, yes. five zero. He's like like the amount of weight in one of those big bags of salt that you buy yeah. at Home Depot when you have to. Oh, that's salt. unbelievable to think about. Yeah, they, they, like you're no longer carrying around a 50-pound bag. Yeah. 
That's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank Good you. For you. There's people who are going woo, 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 and there's other right. people. If you've lost weight like that, give us a call. Well, well, sure. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're not above a good weight loss story. Right. We're no better than NBC. No. Give us a call here at the station if you want to encourage John or tell us your weight loss story if you've been losing with John. 952-946-6205. Or head over to DougPagetRadio.com and you can uh, chat in with other listeners around the world. And as we've been saying for yes. more than a year and a half, maybe even on the space station. Maybe. And during the uh, Cripes Come On, you got to be kidding me segment, uh, I'm going to have to do a little call out on the people in the space station. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a bit. So that's John. He's our sidekick. He's our video producer. And uh, he is uh, he is a, a 50-pound weight loser. Yep. Congratulations. Thank that's you, Doug. Fantastic. And then we have Randon. Randon is, is our man on the controls. Randon's new with us around here. You know, we have been buzzing through. Our, our radio engineers around here, like, yes. uh, <laughs> like the former John on a row of Oreos. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, but Randy, we're glad to have you at least for a couple of weeks that you'll be around here in the little. <laughs> oh yeah, little, until you burn me out in the little cabin mm-hmm. by the woods. And uh, and Randon, how was your week? I had a good week. Yeah, good yeah. week. Yeah, anything yeah. special? Do you, you have anything anything significant going on? Well, my little one. Well, I shouldn't say good week because it was difficult because my little one's out in Florida with his mom and, and her. And I think that's a reference week. you use for your child. Yeah, little one. Okay, my child, <laughs> my son. Your son. So that's been difficult. Oh yeah, but, yeah, yeah. When you're sonless. Mm-hmm. Well, we're glad to have you aboard. Uh, yeah. How was your week, Doug? Hey, thank you, John. I'm sorry. I was sorry. If, if you're I watching the on the cue. video feed, I'm, I actually had to use my hand. We have a little <laughs> rhythm. I say a couple little snarky things at the beginning. We throw it over to John to check in on losing. We say, Randon, how you doing? Uh, he comes back. I dozed off there for a second. Hey, Doug, how was your week? I swear, it's, it's like doing radio with Homer Simpson. Why do you keep saying that? I don't know. Your week, Doug? Because you're funny. Oh, thank you, Doug. And you're, and you're adorable, mm-hmm. and, you're, and you, are, um, you are pleasant to be around. Mm-hmm. That's why I say that. Yeah. My, my week was fine. I, I traveled a bunch again this week. I was off in Detroit and uh, slept in four different beds. Sorry to hear about both of that. Thank you. Thank you. And then I was in Indiana. Well, that's better. Yeah, Indianapolis. So had a fine time. I was doing some social media training as well as uh, helping people lead a conversation on theology. Oh, wow. So theology and Twitter. Yeah. Speaking of theology and Twitter, I uh, ran across a tweeter this week. If you don't know about tweets, there are ways that people socially connect with one another. And I ran across someone because I was searching for tweets on this whole rapture idea. Mm-hmm. And this, this person had tweeted these words saying, Dear Lord, thank you that yesterday was not the rapture because I have not been winning souls like I should. Mm. Thank you for giving us more time. Now yeah. We're going to chat a little bit about it. I thought that was an interesting introduction to what we like to chat about with the rabbi here and then the atheist later. I want to chat about this notion that you're going to, um, that, that people just want to rearrange when the rapture happens, not if it's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, there's a whole bunch of people that are like, oh, that's silly talk. We can't know when. Yeah. As opposed to that's silly talk. That's not how it's all going to go down. Right, so right. I want to talk a little bit about that. And that led me into finding some tweets that this person uh, uh, follows. Yeah. And I want to read a few of those to you because mm-hmm. they, they struck me as funny. Yeah. There were these dear Lord prayers. Okay. And I, this is in all seriousness. Like, this yeah. person is not kidding around. No, these no, these are, aren't jokes. These are sincere prayers that I, I, was, um, I, I was laughing myself uh, into tears. It's too big of a buildup because you might not find them that funny. Here's one. Now, they, he seems to pick up a theme for these little tweets yeah. in these prayers. This one seemed to be um, generated by some sort of household chores. Yeah. Dear Lord... Today, spring clean me, straighten out my life, clean up my credit, iron out my issues, and take out my trash. Yeah. Right. And then here's one that was inspired by his car, apparently. Dear Lord, today, fill me up, start me up, check my oil, do not leave me in park, accelerate me, and give me the right keys. Yeah. And then one apparently was taking a photo because he says, Dear Lord, develop my negatives, (laughs) give me some exposure. Help me see the big picture and put a flash on my future. Oh, my word. But the one, the one that really hooked me above them all was one apparently inspired by breakfast. Mm. Lord, today, break the yoke, take me out of my shell, flip positions, scramble situations, and help me see the sunny side. Oh, my word. Oh, my goodness. Uh, religious people. We are a quirky bunch. Speaking of uh, quirky religious people, Rabbi Joseph, welcome to the radio show. <laughs> Better boom. Uh, nice segue. Uh, we, have, uh, we, have, we have a rabbi around here on the show, and we talk about things to do with uh, Christianity and Judaism and religion in America and the sort of happening, and he's going to stick with us through the second segment. But how was your week? How are things? Uh, good. Good. I uh, have some time off. My finals are done. 
and I'm beginning to get ready to do some summer curriculum development. Yes, summer because you are you are a, a school instructor. I am a professor of religious studies at St. Cloud State University. Mm -hmm. You're one who professes. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, Joseph uh, is, is a rabbi, used to be at Temple Israel here in Minneapolis, and uh, now is a professor and also a commentator here on this program. So we're going to talk about religious imagination about the end of the world when we come back here in the second segment. What, what, what do you think is up with that? I, like from I, a, a lot of people like us to say this. Well, ask the rabbi. From a yeah. Jewish perspective as if all you Jewish people think the same about these things, but from a Jewish perspective, what thinks up with this? The end of time, the eschaton, that's a, a word surprisingly a lot of people don't know, E-S-C-H-A-T-O-N, eschaton, the yes. end of time. That goes back to the prophetic period in the Hebrew Bible. Yeah. Uh, we are warned, you can't bring it on. Uh-huh. Don't, don't try and hasten it. Yes. And you can't impede it. It's, 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 it's whatever's up. It's going to happen. It. In the Jewish imagination. You bet. It's coming. But it's at the end of time. Yeah, well, I want to talk about that because we think about time in such different ways now than people might have, have otherwise. So when we come back here from the break, can we talk a little bit about Please. that? Or are, you, are you up for that? Because I, I want to talk to the atheists about what they think about that whole business. I want to give my own two bits on it and, and the rabbi. And also the, uh, the, the sidekick, the former Pentecostal. Because those former Pentecostals, they have views about the end of time. Mm -hmm. So we'll tell a little bit of the history of this, and we'll be back here, and we'll chat a little bit about why this um, inspires people's imaginations to such a degree that they want to talk about it. Because that's what I find interesting. So our little afternoon delight here is going to be an end-of-the-world edition of Doug Padgett Radio. 